Hello guys, in this video we are going to do the derivation of a peak overshoot that is MP. Okay, so let us see the def definition first. So it is the largest error between the reference input and the output during transient period. You can see the graph. Let us see the graph first. So here, as you can see the graph, uh, x-axis is the time, y-axis is the C of T, the response, transient period is there. So it is starting from zero. It reaches a peak value, correct? It is nothing but a peak time. We have discussed this TP zero to the first peak value. When it reaches the peak value, how much time it is taken? That is peak time. Then you can see from the peak point to the hundred. This is one means it is basically hundred percent of its final value. So hundred percent when it reaches hundred percent of the final value, this line this much is the error largest error so that is nothing but mp peak overshoot okay so it's basically what this point is the c of tp it is nothing but the peak time a uh, peak point you can consider okay from here to here 100 percentage of the final value there is an error that largest error is said to be what peak overshoot okay so let us see the definite uh, derivation part so what happens we'll go by the definition we have c of t is equal to what 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n t by under root of 1 minus zeta square into sine omega d t plus theta so this is the response of second order under damp system now for peak overshoot what we have to do for mp in order to get mp we have to get c of tp minus 1 you have to do see c of tp is here minus 1 you have to do such that you will get mp okay c of tp minus 1 you have to do such that you will get mp now we have mp equal to c of tp c of tp means this is c of t in place of t you have to place in place of t you have to keep tp wherever t is there no you have to keep tp that's it so it will become 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n tp by 1 minus zeta square into sine omega d into tp plus theta correct now minus 1 you have to do minus 1 this one and this one will get cancelled correct so what is remaining minus this thing is remaining now after this we have what is tp tp is nothing but we have the formula pi by omega d correct tp is nothing but pi by omega d so i'll substitute in place of tp pi by omega d so what will happen equal to minus e power minus zeta omega n tp is there i'll place pi by omega d okay by 1 minus zeta square into sine omega d into tp is there pi by omega d plus theta so let me just cancel this part you can see this did cancel correct rest what else will get cancelled this here no chance of getting cancelled here so what is remaining thing no as we know here omega d see this two get got cancelled okay no remaining is here something we can do omega d we can write it as what see here this is pi by omega d we can write it as pi by omega n into 1 minus zeta square as we know we have the formula for omega d it is omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square so what i'll do i'll replace here so see here carefully what will happen equal to minus e power minus zeta omega n into pi by omega n into 1 minus zeta square whole thing divided by 1 minus zeta square into sine what is remaining here pi plus theta correct now what all got uh, get cancelled this thing omega n omega n will get cancelled so what is the remaining so equal to i'll write it here minus e power minus omega sorry zeta omega get got cancelled pi by 1 minus zeta square divided by 1 minus zeta square into sine pi plus theta okay so we'll look into this term sine pi plus theta 
so here as mathematical formula sine pi plus theta or sine 180 plus theta what is that it is nothing but minus sine theta okay minus sine theta so let us see what happens we'll try to find out sine theta what is the value of that as we know we have the formula for tan theta it is equal to 1 minus zeta square by zeta right so when we look into the triangle here this is theta we'll assume tan theta is nothing but opposite by adjacent right opposite by adjacent so opposite side is 1 minus zeta square and adjacent side is zeta now from here can i get the value of this hypotenuse yes by Pythagoras theorem so hypotenuse square is equal to square of this 1 minus zeta square the square plus zeta square correct so hypotenuse square is equal to 1 minus zeta square plus zeta square this square and this square will get cancelled okay so this two get cancelled so hypotenuse will become square root of 1 which is nothing but 1 itself so this value we got it as 1 now from this we can get the value of sine theta okay what is sine theta sine theta is nothing but opposite hypotenuse by sorry opposite by hypotenuse correct what is opposite opposite value is nothing but 1 minus zeta square by hypotenuse is 1 opposite by hypotenuse so sine theta we got it as under root of 1 minus zeta square so i will place this value over here so this will uh, so i'll write it so mp is equal to minus e power minus zeta pi by 1 minus zeta square 1 minus zeta square sine pi plus theta is minus sine theta minus sine theta now minus sine theta sine theta value we got this is nothing but this correct this minus is there this minus is there both get cancelled okay so what is remaining so you can write it as e power minus zeta pi by 1 minus zeta square divided by 1 minus zeta square into sine theta value see this minus this minus is plus okay it is 1 minus zeta square now what will happen now this zeta, 1 minus zeta square and this two get cancelled okay now mp value we will get it as what mp equal to e power minus zeta pi by 1 minus zeta square mp value uh, this much we got now now what is the next step in order to get percentage of mp what we need to do we have to just multiply here 100 so when we want percentage of mp we have to just multiply 100 over here so 100 into e power minus zeta pi by 1 minus zeta square it is in the power okay so this will be the final answer mp mp is the percentage mp same thing okay same formula zeta pi is basically numerator part 